All right. Okay. All right, everybody, we are live. Um, oh, Hugo, we don't have to screen share quite yet. We'll wait till the artists talk. But um, <laughs> sorry, but thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. Um, we are here today for the Scrubs paper virtual exhibition reception here online on YouTube through Google Meet. I am Rachel Heberling. I am the executive director of Frontline Arts. My pronouns are she, her. I've got greenish blonde hair and I'm wearing a light pink shirt and I'm coming to you from the unceded Lenape territory of Eastern Pennsylvania. So we are here to view and to celebrate the words and the artwork made on handmade paper that we have made at Frontline Arts from donated, no longer needed scrubs. So I wanted to thank you all for all of your participation, your support. Thank you to the healthcare workers who risked their lives during the pandemic and who so meaningfully donated their scrubs to us to make paper from. Thank you to Walt and Ron for making all the paper, for, to Leanne and many volunteers that have come out to help deconstruct the scrubs with us, all of our staff like Mike and Lindsay and Hugo, and our member Mark Oldland who have been really crucial and essential to making this project happen, and Lindsay and Hugo for putting the exhibition together, and so many who have donated funds to keep us going. Thank you. And also all of those who originally submitted artwork when the uh, project was first launched. So I'm just going to do a quick little screen share on my end. And I'm going to share some of that early artwork. So I wanted to, oh my goodness, we have someone watching from Florence, Italy. So I just wanted to say ciao, ciao, Bella. <laughs> Grazie. So our first artwork that we ever received, we initially started making postcards. And we had Dr. Gina Puzzuoli, who is a good friend of Eileen Foti here, who actually mailed in a, a reused mask with poetry and writing about unconditional love and the need to be there for her patients at this time, which is a really powerful piece. So shout out to Dr. Gina for being our first Scrubs art ever. You can see these are the postcards that we were mailing out. And we also got a lot of writing from Bessie, who is a CNA in Newark, New Jersey, who wrote a lot about just enjoying life every day and just having to go into work no matter what to be there for her patients as well and that God has a plan. So thank you, Bessie, for being so wonderful and participating early on in this project. We also have Jim Fallon, who has new work here, but he also made some artwork really early on. And Nina Talbot, a friend of Walt. Mark Oldland, this was his early work. Len Merlo. And of course, this incredible work that was done by Ridge High School students at the very end of 2020. And they were on the news with us with this work. It was pretty, pretty amazing. So I just wanted to thank everyone there. And we also just now got a piece from Tara Kraus, who had just done this portrait, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. So that is what I wanted to share on my end, just giving a nod to the very beginnings of this. We started making these postcards last May of 2020. And here we are now with this current call for entries. But before we start talking, 
I just wanted to take a moment since we're all gathered together and I wanted to do a cheers. So I would like everyone to raise a glass or a meaningful object, anything that they have. <laughs> and I want to celebrate that we are all still here, that we have made it through this incredibly difficult time. But I also wanted to give a nod and remember that there are nearly 4 million that we have also lost. So in this bittersweet moment, cheers for us still being here and remembering our loved ones. I'll let you all unmute yourself if you would like to say one, two, three, cheers. 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 <laughs> all right thank you so now i'll have everyone mute themselves again and i just want to do a little grounding for a minute too i know you're like rachel what in the world what is this unscripted silliness you're doing i just want everyone to take a couple breaths this is some difficult stuff we may be talking about today I do see a lot of work of celebration, of hope, of beauty, and carrying on. And I also see a lot of work about confusion, chaos, death, violence, and racial injustice. So I just want to ground ourselves before this talk, and I want everyone to take two breaths. We're going to breathe in for four counts and out for six. Everybody with me? Okay, so we're going to do in for four. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. And out for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. In for four. One, two, three, four. And out for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whew, shake it out. <laughs> okay. I'm ready if you're ready. <laughs> um, right before we go to our first artist speaker, if Hugo, if you wanted to say any words at all about your thoughts, in putting the exhibition together, I invite you to do so. Well, I'm not really sure what I can say. Like, I've been busy with a lot of things while making this, but I guess I'm just pretty happy that I found time to help you guys with the show. So I'm hoping like everyone has a good time today. Thank you. And thank you so much, Hugo. You did an incredible job with putting this together. And uh, everyone's artwork really looks incredible in this show. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we will let the artists decide if they want us to uh, share their work on the screen from our website or if they would like to hold anything up in front of the screen. And from an early volunteer, we had Ani ask to go first since he has to jet a little early. Uh, so Hugo, if you would like to go ahead and start screen sharing his piece. And Ani, I will invite you to talk. We have about five minutes for everyone. Hi, I'm so happy to um, be in this exhibit. It's so, uh, Frontline is like family to me. I've been involved with Frontline since the early 80s when it was the printmaking uh, Council of New Jersey. I worked at the Printmaking Council. Um, they have, I was a key holder back in those days, and I was allowed to uh, use the, key, the studio late at night, and I would put my kids to bed and then go down to the uh, printmaking workshop and work until 11, 12 o'clock, and then I would be able to leave and lock up. And so it was very important to me. I try to participate in everything that I can and 
and uh, support the organization. It's a wonderful organization. So um, um, thank you for letting me go first. Um, my battery is running out and I'm visiting somebody and I just realized what time it was. And so um, my prints, I don't know whether they're up or not. Hugo, are you showing something or what? Yeah. Okay. I don't know whether, is there something up? Yes, there is. There is. Okay. I don't know which one is up. Which one is up? Uh, the morning after COVID in Africa. Okay. Um, all of my prints have to do with uh, the, the um, minority response to uh, COVID. Um, this print is uh, the morning after in Africa, and it's a line of cut. One of the, I've been experimenting with line of cuts and trying to learn how to do it. And um, this is one of my earlier ones. Um, it's made on, it's a, a, a made on the uh, scrubs paper and then with um, uh, chain collet behind. So it's sort of light and dark. Um, COVID has hit Africa very hard. Um, they do not have vaccines in the same way that we do. Um, the, one, the, all of my prints have to do with, again, the minority response to COVID. And one of those responses that is that people have basically traditional medicine and hope. And um, that this print sort of represents that. Um, that's kind of it for this one. This is um, Homacea. And in it, we see um, it's from Brazil, um, where, uh, Af where African girls very often were tasked with taking care of um, the children of their masters or of, their, of the plantation leaders. And in these countries, in uh, third world countries, and in um, countries where they're where uh, medicine is not um, is not so easily obtained, what people have to work with is traditional medicine, and then you see around there are images of um, various things, patent medicines, and um, uh, traditional doctors, tribal doctors. Um, there's a, a small print of a. Um, a medieval doctor wearing one of the, the bird masks. Um, and again, what traditional people, people in traditional cultures and third world cultures have to deal with um, epidemics and other kinds of health concerns would be either spiritual medicine, traditional medicine, um, and hope. And so that's kind of what Hermosia is about. Hermosia was a a, a, um, a, a patent medicine that was supposed to cure everything. Uh, and um, the next one is um, We Need Nurses Now. Um, the central figure is um, of a woman who was the first, first African-American nurse um, in, the, in, America, in, in history. She nursed the 365th um, African American regiment um, for the full four years that uh, that they took part in the Civil War, and she never received a penny for it. Um, also, there's a little. All of these are are the last two are um, combined prints. They combine painting, drawing, and um, transfers. So all of these are actually transfer pictures from off the internet, magazines, books, things like that. And um, there's also a picture on one side of Sojourner Truth, another picture of Harriet Tubman, um, people who were who early nurses who nursed African-American troops during the Civil War and did not get paid for it. Um, another image is one of um, a nurse who started the, the first graduate, African-American graduate nurse in America. Um, was not allowed to work in the hospital and um, started her own hospital. And World War I nurses who were not allowed to um, nurse American soldiers, but were allowed to nurse German soldiers during World War I. And so that's kind of it. 
little stroll down memory lane, and I hope it didn't take more than five minutes. <laughs> Aw, thank you so much for sharing your amazing work, Ani. That's, that's an incredible perspective of, you know, those devastated by the pandemic already at such a disadvantage and those who've been unrecognized. So thank you, Ani, for that really powerful work. Thank you so much for including me. Um, I, I um, saw more than one advertisement for this show, and one of them said the 16th, and so I tried to, <laughs> tried to wait it until the 16th to start working on it. And so I was um, gracious, gracious enough to let me put things in at the last minute. And I was really We We Again, got you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and oh, and we have a hi from Bessie, who we mentioned at the beginning. She's watching on YouTube. Thank you so much. Hi, Bessie. <laughs> okay. Now that um, we are done with our very first talk, do we have any volunteers to go next? Cassandra. Uh, sure, I don't mind. And you you can use your resources to show images of the work. Sure. So Hugo, if you would like to start sharing Cassandra's work. Um, the the and I don't know I don't know what's up, but. Um, both of my images are carved from uh, uh, woodblock, Sheena, Sheena plywood, um, leading up uh, until early May. I had just been, you know, struggling with the number of uh, de untimely deaths of young African Americans. Uh, and I'm old enough to feel like some of them could have been my children. Uh, some were the age of my children. Some were older than my actual child is. Uh, but relating to, the, to these deaths as a mother losing children and as a community mother losing uh, their potential <laughs> to contribute to the community. Um, uh, case in point, Brianna Taylor. Um, so May 1st, I... I uh, was participating in International Print Day. And so on that day in particular, I carved about six different wood blocks. And my goal was to uh, print as many things on fabric as I could on that particular day. Uh, so images of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd were two of several images that I printed onto fabric. And subsequently, I uh, created about 20 flags uh, that were on my lawn and are now on public display, display where I live here in, uh, Phil in Philadelphia. So when the Scrubs project came up, um, you know, the Printmaking Center of New Jersey is close to my heart. Uh, I've had the privilege uh, to sit in a Sunday or two some years ago um, with the, with the uh, veteran paper makers, artists, um, and I, I made paper from my own father's uniform and had them interpret, you know, what the badges were. I had no idea what could be shared of my father's history just from looking at his his badges, um, if, if that's the right name. I don't mean to diminish it. But at any rate, um, the Printmaking Center holds a very dear spot in my heart. So when I heard about this call, I ordered a lot of paper. <laughs> it seemed like a lot to me because uh, I actually have a, my own trove of, you know, handmade paper from my dad's actual uh, uniforms. But I ordered some of the scrubs paper, um, and I, you know, as the deadline neared, I, 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 I was trying to decide which of the many images I had carved to actually uh, imprint onto the the scrubs paper. Brianna Taylor, no brainer. You know, she was an emergency room technician. She just worked several uh, 12 hour shifts in a row before the unfortunate 
uh, murder uh, when I guess narcotics police, I don't know if it was a mistake or not, but at any rate, in a, in a raid on her home, narcotics police killed her literally in her bed. Uh, so it seemed appropriate to honor her by putting her image as, uh, you know, as one of those heroes that we think of when we think of people who wear those scrubs. So uh, the image of Breonna Taylor, again, that was a no brainer. Um, and coming out of the carving day, the image of George Floyd was one of my favorites. Um, uh, I've been just, I guess for the last year, I've been carving really nothing but uh, portraits, pretty portraits. Uh, and that's been, I guess, the top one or two that I've created in, in the past year. But that one I created on May 1st. Uh, and so when I thought about his story, I looked at the timeline of his, the last hour of his life. Uh, and so I, it, in using information from that timeline, I titled this uh, an hour, I think it's an hour uh, with emergency responders. And I count police into that category. And so I went through the timeline that was reported from, again, from the police responding to a call to the things that police did to the emergency folks who arrived and, you know, put his non-responsive body on the gurney. Uh, to the emergency room people who declared him dead. So those, that's, the, the, that's the timeline that's indicated, uh, and that is handwritten on some, some separately dyed paper. Um, so again, uh, it's a woodblock print on Scrubs pa paper uh, with collaged with timeline of, of interactions George Floyd had during the last hour of his life with emergency um, responders. So I think my five minutes are up, but thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Cassandra. First of all, I'm really glad that you were able to make paper with your father's uniform with our veterans. That's amazing. Um, we, whenever you would like, we'd love to have you back. <laughs> I all hope right. to see thank you. you. Um, and absolutely incredible, powerful work that brings me to tears. Thank you so much. Um, I'm honored that you have put images of Brianna Taylor and George Floyd on Scrubs paper as a meaningful way to work through um, everything that has happened. So thank you, really amazing. Um, okay, anyone to be artist number three? Oh, I, I saw Joanne's hand first. Joanne Ross, would you like yeah. to go? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you could put my piece up if you want. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to thank Rachel and every everyone who uh, helped to make this show possible. And I'm a, a new member to Frontline Arts, although I have shown with them previously, but I have old friends like Lenny and Ani, who I know from, uh, teaching. And uh, so uh, when I, okay, I'm a sometimes printmaker, and I guess I struggled a bit with the paper itself. So I kind of ended up doing a bit of a painting on here and a collage work. But I thought a lot about the paper because my dad was a medic during World War II. And I had ordered World War II paper. And the more I thought about how I wanted to approach this idea, and I thought about just the lineage of time and history. Uh, it brought me to notions of tents and paper itself and how tents are made out of paper and well, not always, but you know, they can be. And how this little piece of paper really ended up protecting uh, so many people, this mask. So I shaped this image into uh, a tent and um, thought then about song and music and poetry and thought about Bob Dylan and how this very protective, almost a maternal tent became a she and welcomed, you know, all of us to protect ourselves, to give us a little ownership over this really unknown pandemic and all the fear that we went through uh, to come out, still coming out uh, at this end of it. 
So thank you again, and I'm very happy to have participated. Thank you, Joanne. I think it's a really beautiful piece. I really, really love what you did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, oh, and we have some YouTubers very actively commenting. I'm sorry, I, for a second, I forget that that's happening. And uh, <laughs> so I just wanna read that a little bit. We have Peg Fallon's Powerful Pieces. Uh, oh my goodness, Wit Lopez. I love Wit, hi. <laughs> Uh, Wit says, great work, Ani, and beautiful Prince Cassandra. And Zita, tuning all the way in from Florence, from Firenze, says that she loves the Brianna print paper and also the collage. So props to everyone thus far. Okay, anyone would like to go next? Claire? Yes, thank, thank you, Rachel. You can, um, if Hugo doesn't mind sharing my work on the screen. And while that's happening, like everyone else, I want to thank you and everyone at Frontline because just being able to go to Frontline and make an appointment and see, and see Mike and pick out the paper and have it in my fingers was um, was really uplifting. And this piece, oh, well, we could talk about this piece. Um, I had a really bad fall about two years ago. And I made a big mess of my right hand and I wasn't sure I'd be able to work again. And the surgeon said, when I asked him, will I have full use of my hand? He said, of course, but it took a lot of PT. And I have to say, I had, I had wonderful, um, wonderful health care. And I, I can't take that for granted because we don't all have that. So um, partially it was the luck of the draw. I had a good hand surgeon happened to be on call that day. And since that time, I've been trying to figure out how, um, how to process the experience in my work. So when I had the opportunity to work on Scrubs paper, the wheels really started to turn. And I did something which I did not want to do at first, which was I asked for the files of, of my records. So this is an x-ray of the repair job on my hand with the 10 pegs and the the big titanium plate in there. Um, you, can, you can't see the scar on my hand on the screen, but I could tell you it's so tiny and invisible, it's like a miracle. It's something I'll, I'll never take for granted. So um, what, what I did was I, I reprocessed what they had on, on my disc and I took the text, which looked so, so dry and um, technical, and I put it in script and so I tried to make a contrast between um, the flow of the script and the rigidity of the x-ray. And uh, I, I printed that onto silk so that I could stitch it onto the, onto the scrubs paper because I didn't want to do anything to obscure the beautiful texture and the variety of color in, in the scrubs paper. So I think that there's another one with another view of, of my arm and there it is. I, I, I can't imagine the size of that plate. I've never actually seen anything like that outs, outside of here. But um, there's, a, there's a third x-ray that's not here where, I mean, the power of our medical professionals is so amazing. The, the x-ray didn't really look that bad to me, but apparently I did a real number on my arm, so. Um, I would make pretty much the same comments for this piece as the other one. It's just the text is a little bit different. Those are really long words. I had to look them all up. There was a lot of medical terminology that I did. Well, there we go. Common unit oblique. Thank you, Hugo. Oblique fracture. It's not good. <laughs> 
It wasn't good. Now this piece also is a um, is a record of is a record of healing. A few years ago, I had a bizarre experience where um, and difficult experience where I was told I had cancer, but I didn't. But it took in order to be to totally thorough, uh, I, I had to go and undergo a lot of stressful tests. So when they finally decided that there really was nothing wrong with me, um, at least physically, um, I took a uh, my husband and I took a trip to. Um, Gateway Park, which is in Staten Island, and I think extends outside Staten Island. And we got some beautiful views of the Verrazano Bridge from unusual perspectives. So once again, that was something I hadn't really processed, but with the, that Staten Island blue paper, which is radiant, it's just the most beautiful blue. I, I had this Im the, these images that had a lot of blue in them, and, and I think they made good friends. So it's, I hope five minutes worth. Thank you, Claire. Absolutely you. beautiful. Thank and you. Yes, a very appropriate use. That paper was called Staten Island Blue. Well, first of all, Walt loves naming the paper. That's like <laughs> one of his main jobs. And it came from the first scrubs of a nurse anesthetist who works at a hospital on Staten Island. So really, really powerful use. And uh, I hear you on the stressful tests and the waiting and what an amazing and beautiful way to work through that on the scrubs paper. Thank you for sharing. Thank you to Walt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wonderful. Who would like to go next? Laura. So the, uh, I think I, I only turned in one uh, JPEG and it's, I don't have it with me. So it would have to come from the website if Hugo can do that. You know, while I'm waiting, can I ask, how did you get the x-rays onto your paper? Um, I took the disc. Can you hear me? Yeah. I took the disc and what's really, uh, this is like a Freudian slip. I, I wanted to go back to that disc the other day. I don't know where I put it. I don't know where I put it. Um, well, the first thing was that I, I called orthopedics and they sent me to, um, they sent me to radiology and they sent me to medical records. Uh, and they sent me the disc which I, I, I printed and um, I put it through Photoshop and I printed it, but I had to reverse it. There was, I found a place in Photoshop where I could, I could, yeah. where I could reverse the contrast yeah. and, then, and then I sharpened it. So you put the, the uh, paper directly through your printer? Yes, I used something called, um, uh, Oh, it's not organic. It's made by the Jacquard people. Extravorganza. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It yeah. comes it comes in, in back sheets yeah. and you can put directly on, on silk and then you peel it off. And then you have a sheer image. Really so, smart. Really, really wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. And I, I, I'm going to have to remember you because I wrote a book about this stuff. I'm going to remember you when it comes into oh. the next edition. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting back to you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So um, I, I, I kind of have to apologize because um, the a question I always get, which I just asked Claire actually, is how did you get those images onto the paper? So that's what my statement was about cyanotype, which is a very old, one of the first photo processes ever. And, um, but I, I realized after I saw some of the other statements that really what was much more appropriate, I think, is the way you all talked about your own experiences and uh, what the past year has meant for you. 
So I, I just want to apologize that I just blew it. And um, because I had, uh, um, I, I know I didn't have as hard a year as some people had. And uh, yet uh, I retired from teaching, which was a community I was very close to. And then we had the quarantine on top of it. So it was very isolating, especially in New England in the winter. And so um, I started this whole project of little uh, handmade books. And uh, this quote comes from one of those books. It's uh, by the poet Seamus Haney from Granite Walks. And um, what I was looking for is to maybe, I don't know, provide a little hope to people who uh, had really experienced um, a very, very dark time. And um, I, I, I can't say that, um, that as much as it was hard for me, I don't think it was as hard as some of my friends and colleagues and other people had. So I tried to maybe provide a little inspiration and even some humor at times. So in actual fact, there's a Nelson Mandela quote that I used in one of my books that I really love, which is, um, he said, and this is a man who should know, holding a grievance is like swallowing poison and hoping it will kill your enemy. So uh, if he can do that, I figured like, that's really amazing to me that he can, after all those years in prison, uh, offer hope or wisdom to other people. So, um, I, yeah, I had worked with combat paper, which was the, uh, I think, folded into uh, scrubs. So I knew that I was going to need a lot of time and a lot of effort, and it would take quite a few attempts to even get to this point. So I'm just hoping that uh, people who come upon this, maybe it lightens their load a little bit. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Laura. So you, I think you might be one of the few cyanotypes that I've seen yet on this paper. Was that a difficult process to yes. get to get out? Uh, a lot of testing. Oh no. Yes, it was hard. And I bought, I thought enough paper, but in actual fact, the diptych that you just saw, on the back of it is my mistakes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got desperate towards the end. <laughs> But I think that's beautiful and all part of the process. Right. And the and a very lovely quote. That it is. Yeah. So thank you. It is inspiring. We have a few more comments. Uh, Anne Marie Miller says, really amazing process. And then on YouTube, we have um, Wit loves the incorporation of X rays. Leah Cadia says, well done, Claire. And Bessie says, beautiful, awesome art by everyone. Such amazing stories behind each one. Thanks for sharing. It made my day. <laughs> OK. Next, I think I see Carolyn. Hi, everybody. And thank you for Frontline for putting this on. This was, this was good. Um, I think I'm just going to hold things up because I want to show you the plate. This is, this is the, uh, the piece of mine. Um, it's a simple relief print. Um, and when I did it, I was thinking about um, how many sleepless nights uh, people who work in hospitals or other medical facilities had over the past year. And for me, seeing the moon over trees or plants has always been um, very joyful and relaxing. Um, it, 
it doesn't have the spooky connotations to me. It's very peaceful. And so this is just wishing uh, people, especially people impacted by COVID, um, peace and restful nights uh, among all the troubles of the world. And I wanted to hold it up because I also wanted to show you the plate for this. Um, this is on uh, a fancy carving material from Japan, I think, uh, called Gomuban. It's my really my first time um, playing with it. And it's really, the reason I'm mentioning that is that it's really nice to carve. So if anyone hasn't played with it, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I raised my hand at that point because uh, I think we were kind of on a, um, on a little interlude of people struggling with paper. And I will say that I have never printed on, this is my first experience with handmade paper. And, um, and it, it was different. <laughs> And I also have a sad string of um, things printed on two sides and experiments. Um, and um, I, I was I was reasonably happy with this, but I have a lot to learn about printing on handmade paper. but this was this was a lot of fun. So thank you, Frontline. Thank you, Carolyn. And yes, handmade paper is, uh, it's, it can be very difficult because each piece is unique and each batch is unique. Um, we try to do, be as consistent as we can, but it's very hard to print on paper that's thick when you're printing by hand, for one. Um, plus we have synthetic fibers in there, which is uh, a total, a total wild card, but we make it work. And I really appreciate all, all of your extreme diligence in figuring out at home, which I know is not easy. Uh, gosh, maybe we should have a show of all the backs of the paper. <laughs> I will say it's totally beautiful paper and it was yeah. really wonderful to work with uh, if, if challenging. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for your beautiful and inspiring piece, Carolyn. I think Anne Marie uh, raised their hand. Yes, Anne Marie, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, thank you. My um, my piece is um, all about um, it's something I've been doing lately. And I think it's just related to the time that we're in. Um, is it's all about um, I don't know lately uh, deconstructing and reconstructing things. Um, so so this is um, the paper uh, woven um, um, along with um, some other fibers, including um, uh, part of a COVID mask, and. Um, <laughs> It's it's not while it's kind of a responsive piece to um, the deconstruction reconstruction. Um, it's there's also some applied uh, gouache on top, which kind of was making me feel about the fact that it's still a little bit like a mask if you turn it the other direction, and you know was almost like uh, things trying to penetrate but not not making their way through. So in a way, it's protective of us and protective of others and. And um, and there you go. There's a uh, cotton, a little bit of wool in there, um, and um, it's what it is. It's <laughs> um, I the, the sort of the piece behind me is also deconstructed, reconstructed piece. So it's 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 um, lately I think symbolic of what we've all gone through over this past year. And I just wanted to applaud um, all the work I've seen so far. It's so amazing. And also um, the student work was also quite incredible. Um, and thank you for doing this. I still have one more piece of, of scrub paper left. So I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do with that next. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. I love seeing 
all the different responses to this paper. That's absolutely incredible. From traditional printing to collage to photographic processes to weaving. And uh, it's really interesting to see the response of integrating masks with paper made out of scrubs. And my mind is going with the possibility. I think that's absolutely lovely, Anne-Marie. And it's such an honor to have you as a part of this. Thank you for all of your constant hard work and advocacy for the arts. This is just so cool. And it's lovely to have you as a participant. Eileen has raised her hand. <laughs> Please. Um, hello, Hugo, can you share your screen for me? So um, my piece is called Eternal, and I'm just going to read my little tiny statement um, as to how I came about to make this piece. I use the element of fire to reference COVID. The pandemic swept across the world in record time, burning everything in its path. It ravaged families, frontline workers, and life as we knew it. Some countries ran out of burial land, and others ran out of trees to create funeral pyres. But as with any monumental fire, we go on hoping that something meaningful will rise from the ashes. Um, the reason I sort of thought about fire, in addition to everything I just said, is because as I spoke to family and friends and students of mine who either had COVID or had loved ones that had COVID, the sensation of burning and fire and heat kept coming up over and over again, whether they were talking about their temperature or the way their limbs felt or the way their lungs felt. And it just sort of underscored the intensity of, of, the, of the disease itself, but also the psychological effect that the disease was having on so many people, virus, I should say, on so many people. So I thought about things like structure of the body, and that's sort of why I decided to work with a rib cage that is supposed to be our basic protection. Our bones are supposed to protect the vital organs, our hearts, our lungs, and, and keep us safe. Yet there's this fire burning within, which is the COVID as it's burning people's lungs and people's hearts as they're losing loved ones. So that's pretty much where the reference came from. Um, in terms of process, I use lithography and monotype. Um, I didn't print directly on the handmade paper. Instead, I printed on Gompi, which is also known as silk tissue. It's a very, very thin, translucent, anonymous Japanese paper. and this way I was able to layer things. So I printed on the gompi, the rib cage, and by printing on that paper, it didn't affect the way I drew because the fibers from the scrub paper weren't getting in the way of the drawing. I glued down the rib cage and then I was monotyping the flames onto more gompi and gold leafing the tips of the flames. And that way I could layer the flames one on top of the other to sort of build up this explosion of fire. And so I think the process is a metaphor for the theme. And that's pretty much it. Wow, that was a very powerful piece, Eileen. Thank you. Really incredible. Um, I think it references also to, yeah, the soul and eternity. And besides the, the discomfort of the disease. I, I know that you've gone through quite a bit and I'm really touched that you found the time to make work on our scrubs paper and it's incredible. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I know we still have some folks. You, you know, you don't have to talk if you absolutely don't feel like talking at all. You don't have to, but um, who would like to go next? Benjamin, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Hugo, if you don't mind uh, sharing the images from the website. Um, I did just want to start and say uh, how excited I am just to be in this exhibition with everyone. Um, and a big thank you to Frontline Arts and especially Jim um, to for showing me uh, this beautiful paper. Um, it was a lot of fun to work with. Um, a lot more challenging than canvas or wood stuff that I'm used to um, painting on. But yeah, this first one um, or this painting right here is 
titled A Moment of Surprise. Um, I think no one really knew exactly what was going to happen with COVID and a lot of uncertainty was there. Um, I looked to capture that just with simple geometric uh, shapes and lines, um, kind of weaving together, but still letting the uh, paper behind breathe. Um, that beautiful blue color um, comes through rather nicely. Um, and then um, the next one I titled um, A Moment of Bliss. Um, there's a lot of, I think, um, negative, very difficult things that happened during COVID. But for me personally, um, I met my partner, Lauren, um, right before COVID had happened. And any time that I got with her through FaceTime or when we were able to visit each other um, after COVID started dying down was always uh, a moment of bliss, a little bit of uh, a breath of fresh air kind of away from everything else. Um, in this piece, there's a lot of pattern, um, a lot of line work, a lot of interconnectivity. And I felt during COVID that even though, you know, people are more isolated, I do think that people also found ways like we are doing right now on this virtual exhibit through FaceTime and whatnot to catch up with family, um, catch up with friends and, um, you know, see what's going on in their life. Um, so this is kind of my internal uh, um, uh, just just my internal uh, representation of what that year kind of felt like. And then the final piece that I did, um, this is a little bit zoomed in, but I titled it Which Way Through? Um, and more or less, this was just a representation of which way do we go through um, COVID? Which way do we figure out how to get through this. And so you have the, the green rectangle of uh, symbolizing life. And then you have these other objects that are that are going in and under and through um, the greater uh, pathway of life. Um, and so it's just a question, which way do you want to do it? And you can always um, pursue different things with different energies. Um, you can choose to be positive and I try to show that in my work as much as possible. Um, even with everything that is going on, there's still a lot of light, um, still a lot of love and still a lot of good that's out there in this world. Um, and so I wanted to make sure my paintings represented that. Thank you so much for sharing, Ben. Yeah, and thank you guys again. I appreciate it. Yeah, and see, it's word of mouth. I love that uh, Jim told you about the show uh, as family, and thank you so much. I love all of the different emotions represented with abstract work on the scrubs paper. Very well done, and thanks for tuning in from, from Colorado. Yep, checking in from Denver. <laughs> so cool what we can do. Mark, I think your hand is raised. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so uh, I wanted to start uh, initially to talk a little bit about, uh, Rachel had mentioned, uh, you know, some of the people involved in making the paper. And I wanted to talk a little bit to, uh, about the, what it takes to make this paper. Um, for those that don't know, it involves breaking it down, the material, turning it into rag, throwing it in a beater, um, then taking it out straining that, pulling it through uh, a, 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 um, a, 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 a mold and decal, and then pressing the paper, and then, of course, letting it dry. So there's quite a bit of effort that goes into um, making this paper. And, 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 and uh, two of the individuals that were mentioned uh, that made, uh, made the paper, uh, uh, Walt Nygaard and um, Ron Erickson, I don't know if they're on. Uh, I know Jim's on. I know he's involved, heavily involved in making the paper. Um, and, and it's really uh, the paper making itself is is um, an art in and of itself. So I, I, I wanted to make certain that the people involved in that get get to do credit for, for what what it takes to make the paper. Um, and in addition to that, my piece speaks to one of those individuals um, directly. Um, someone that uh, 
really, I, I admire his work um, and, 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 and look up to. Um, and uh, so this piece is called Master Copy. That's critical um, because it is a copy of his work in, to some regards. Um, and he's a mentor. And then he very suddenly, unexpectedly contracted COVID went into the hospital and, 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 you know, really got me thinking and about the impacts of it. So, uh, I felt compelled to pay a tribute to him. So that's why I chose to copy one of his seminal works, which is called burrowing now. Now the difference between the only real difference in terms of, um, the, the, the general drawing, uh, that was done here is, is I added uh, uh, either a cabby hat, I called it a Peaky Blinder cap. Um, and for those that know the, the, the show and understand the reference of Peaky Blinder, it's, you know, they're pretty street, uh, pretty tough guys that really fight in battle. Um, and so Ron, who tends to wear one of these hats. I, I felt, you know, as an added tribute to him, I, 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 I gave the owl a, a peaky blinder cap. Um, so this is a piece uh, that's really directed towards him and in some regards, Walt and Jim, um, as, as people that I really look up to in, in, uh, in their work. So uh, when, when one of our close-knit groups um, veterans that, that work with this paper went in for COVID. Uh, I, it felt it necessary that we really pay tribute to him. So that's, that's the piece. Thank you for sharing, Mark. I was so touched when I saw this print on the drying racks. Um, it was just a really moving uh, nod to Ron and we all certainly care about him a lot. And I think that's a really amazing thing to do. I found that helpful too. When you're worried about someone and you don't know what else to do, you can make some art for them, of them on, on scrubs paper. And uh, yes, yeah, thank you for, again, acknowledging those who have made the paper. I can show some images of the process later if you like. I think I just saw a wave out of the corner of my eye. Yes. Would you like to go next, Michael? Yes, yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. And if Hugo could put up my little uh, picture, that would be great. I'm sorry, what was the name? Uh, Michael McEwen? Yeah, it's a nest kind of thing. I'm sorry, we get confused. You're sharing a Zoom, uh, a Google Meet screen. <laughs> Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to the people who made the paper and made the show possible. This is my first um, thing with um, the handmade paper in Frontline, and it was really interesting. And I'm very excited to be to be part of it, and all the other artists in the show. It's it's really great. Um, this is a. I've been using a a nest like. Um, metaphor for a, a few years now and it's been a metaphor for absence and for loss and I think that was how I felt um, about what we've all been going through for the past 18 months or so um, an absence of um, friends and an absence of people passing away and um, it just seemed like um, that the metaphor was <laughs> dog, yeah. those are our dogs that <laughs> doing something in the background um, um, <laughs> they agree with you I've lost my whole yes, speaking for you 
<laughs> They're telling their sorrows. This was hard enough before they started barking. Um, so that's basically it. It's um, it's a metaphor for for loss and absence. And um, nests are they're also homes, albeit fragile and temporary ones. And most of these drawings, they don't have anything in the nest. The nests are um, empty. And um, that is a, another kind of a metaphor for uh, something that's gone. They've stopped now, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. This is a very powerful piece. I, that definitely came across right away. A comfort and uh, and a loss and a loneliness in one. So wonderful job. Thank you. Okay, I think we might just have a couple people left. I am looking at my notes here. I think we have Jim Fallon and... Debbie Iacovelli, if either of you would like to go. Jim? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I want to thank all of you for putting on such a great display. Uh, your artwork is amazing. And also to the frontline crew, uh, Rachel, Lindsay, Hugo, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have a few pieces that <clears throat> uh, I did during the pandemic, and uh, this one <clears throat> was uh, a bright, bright acrylic red uh, lining with a stethoscope inside, <clears throat> just to uh, express our thanks to the medical people who have been so good for a year and really uh, it, it's hard to explain how great those things are. Um, we appreciate many of them for listening to our hearts and from their hearts. And uh, that's why I came up with that piece. Uh, this uh, was another one that, this was on uh, Nurses Scrubs. And it's watercolor. Now, you have to be careful with watercolor because if you use too much, it goes back to pulp. <laughs> so, <laughs> so watercolor can be a little tricky on uh, either combat paper or frontline paper or scrubs. Um, this is, uh, uh, it, it, it's just a feeling that to try to get over this, to look forward to something brighter, to look forward to something that uh, that we've been looking forward to for a year and a half. And uh, uh, it, it was for that reason. Uh, all right, the next one is another one that <clears throat> I, uh, I was just hoping that the people who were the frontline people, uh, this is called Shelter Bay. And I just hope that these people who've been working so hard can find a little shelter, can find a little time off because of all the time they put in. And uh, uh, it, it's something I hope, everyone hopes that they, they will feel a little better about what they've done. And uh, I also want to thank everybody else who was in the show. And uh, uh, thank you, Frontline Arts. I've been a member for eight or 10 years or so, <laughs> all the way back from when it was combat paper. But uh, OK, so that's it for me. Thanks. And uh, carry on. Thank you so much, Jim. And Peg, who is giving lots of wonderful, encouraging comments about touching powerful, beautiful artwork. Uh, yes, Jim, you've been involved. It must be 10 years. It's the 10 year anniversary of the first combat 
frontline paper workshops this fall. So, and thank you for just being um, so involved in everything that we do and one of our veteran members. So you're the best, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Debbie. Okay. Yay. I um, I'm a little intimidated to go, so it's probably why I didn't volunteer. Oh, sorry. I thought I saw your hand. I'm. And you then, don't have to if you don't. Want. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> um, I appreciate everybody's effort in um, making the paper. I love paper. Um, I have way too much paper in my house. I have to stop myself from getting paper. Um, so uh, I my piece is not necessarily um it's it doesn't come out of myself having experience with covid um thank god um but i know other people that have um but i really didn't have any uh personal connections like some of you um and gone through a lot of the the suffering that other people have gone through um you know i'm thankful for that but it's you know it's been a tough time for so many people um during this time where we're out less and less, um, or not at all, I decided to um, just go through a book that I had gotten on making calligraph prints, just because I was interested in, in learning it. Um, so um, what I did was I went through the book and I kind of just kind of taught myself with the book how to do the different types that you know were were pretty much given instruction for in this book. And um, this was a piece that was. Um, actually like a jigsaw puzzle. So once the, the piece was on uh, the board, it was cut up into little pieces and printed in relief individually, um, and then put back together like a puzzle. And I have a little mini press at home. So I was able to put it through the press. So it's a small print. Um, so um, anyway, so that's, that's, that's how I made it. And, and um, that was a the theme and just kind of putting things together. I do like relief printing. Um, so it was kind of um, of interest to me to print it as relief and not Intaglio. Um, and the colors I really chose, I, I don't live on the ocean, but I live pretty close to the water. Um, and when you go down to the ocean, these are kind of like, um, it's, a little, it's a little off on the screen, but um, I don't know if you can. I don't think you can see it better on this. Those colors are a little off. It's a little deeper, um, but they're more um, uh, blue green, if you will, the hues. Um, and I liked the aqua paper. Um, I thought it lent itself to this. Um, so that's pretty much was the process. And again, I really, um, I didn't have like a healthcare worker theme just because I'm not a healthcare worker, don't claim to be you know, involved in that way and, and really didn't have personal experience um, other than knowing some people that got pretty sick with COVID, unfortunately. Um, and then I guess the ocean theme, you know, the ocean is unpredictable, but predictable. It's strong, uh, yet healing, um, you know, water is a symbol for cleaning so cleansing so hopefully um it will lend itself to that but i don't really have a whole lot other to say other than that's my little piece so i appreciate you taking it and um anyway and that's it <laughs> thank you so much debbie that was wonderful I really, I love how you took the color of the paper. Uh, we do have some sea foam greens and actually interpreted it with your image of the sea. It's a powerful healing piece and it's beautiful. So thank you. I think I captured everybody that's on in this call. I think if I can see all the squares, is that true? Did I miss anyone in here that wanted to participate? Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, uh, we just got a comment on YouTube. Hugo, could I ask you to screen share again and I will just call out names of um, people that we didn't get to see yet since they're not on? Thank you. So if you could share Leanne's mom's Piece, the writing.
So Leanne just commented. Uh, Leanne is who I shouted out to earlier. She's a volunteer that has helped a ton with a lot of cutting scrubs uh, over since since last summer. And she also helps us with bookkeeping. She's amazing. And her mom actually did a lot of scrubs cutting with her uh, as, as a project that they did together when she had her staying at her house for a while. So Leanne says, I love seeing all this amazing artwork and hearing your comments. Thanks for including my mom's entry. She enjoyed having a mission cutting scrubs over the winter and loved seeing the beautiful results. And if you can't read it, this is uh, her mom, Mary Beth's writing on the paper. And it says, I loved helping my daughter, Leanne, cut up the scrubs for the paper project. Thanks to all the COVID workers who got us through that awful time. Best to you all. So that is um, a really touching piece. And it was really cool to have it in. So thank you, Leanne and Mary Beth. And Hugo, if you could also share Len Merlo's piece. I think he actually has, yeah, he has three in a row. So if you can just go through them. Uh, so this is Len Merlo, who is also one of our main volunteers that helps with pretty much everything at the studio if you need help. And he has done some collage pieces he does a lot of work with encaustic and monotype. And this, uh, this is a self-portrait that I think is kind of hilarious, but also really depicting uh, some feelings of isolation during COVID. Uh, this is, Hugo, this is relief, correct? I think it's a relief print. Yes, the line of cut. <laughs> so that's awesome. And what else? Uh, Ani Kruger, I think it's right there, that long piece with the abstract. Yes. This is an absolutely beautiful piece. I, I think she bought the paper like the week or a few days before the deadline. So I don't even know how she did this, but this is an incredible, just wonderful abstract work of swirling lines and mixed media. So thank you for your participation, Ani. And then Bill broke over the letters. He sent in a statement. Is that in the, I forget what it said, but, um, but basically uh, he was conveying sort of the chaos and the unpredictability and the, you know, inequity and injustice and everything going on during COVID. So this piece was titled Over, Under, Upside Down. So I think this was also a pretty powerful work. Okay, and then I guess I should talk. <laughs> I don't know. I had a few pieces that were from early on. So this is actually my drawing of Bessie, who was tuning in at the beginning, the nurse in Newark. And I also did a drawing of Laura, the nurse anesthetist on Staten Island. And then also, um, sorry, Lauren. And then this is Laura, who uh, is a, a uh, psychologist, a nurse uh, and a psychiatric RN. So basically, and then Hugo, if you want to stop screen sharing, I'm going to grab something. Oh, Rachel, probably. Yes. Rachel, have they seen those? Those three healthcare yes. workers, have they seen the portraits? So what I did was one of them, the one of the, the blue, the Staten Island one, that was a request for a holiday present in December. So I did it as a surprise. And that was gifted to her by her husband at Christmas. And uh, she was she really loved the, the piece and, and found it meaningful. The other two I also did as a surprise and I mailed them right away um, or dropped them off. Um, it was a thank you for donating scrubs. So that's why I did portraits and sent them out. So I don't actually have them. Uh, but I just asked to get, do a few more. So maybe this is, I don't know if I'm supposed to be revealing this, but uh, some more presents. Um, 
I am almost done with this one. This is Jackie, uh, who I believe is a, a pediatrician. This is probably really terrible lighting, so I apologize. <laughs> and then um, I decided to have some more fun with the pink paper. Um, this is a, a dental uh, hygienist. So you can see she's rocking the pink leopard print scrubs. <laughs> so I had fun echoing that onto the paper. But they're not finished. Uh, very slowly plugging away on that uh, when I can on the weekends. And thank you. I, that's the only way that I can see to give back. Um, it's just, I don't know. Art is healing, art is medicine, and when I think about somebody and want to thank them and wish them well. I, I enjoy drawing portraits. Um, okay, so last, ah, see, I made one of Lindsay too. Yes, you can go ahead. <laughs> and Rachel did of me and she sent it while I was in the hospital with COVID because I've been teaching in person all, uh, all year. So Rachel did this for me. Aww. So I just wanted to, I wanted to show it while you were showing the other ones. Thank you for sharing. I'm always like nervous to mention yours. I'm sorry because I don't know if it's too personal and it's just like all the feels in this phone call. But so, so for real, um, I had just been asked to do the portrait of uh, Laura and I was a little scared to do it and, uh, and then all of a sudden Lindsay was in the hospital. And so I just was like, well, I need to do something now. <laughs> and I did not know what to do. Lindsay, I was so freaking worried about you. <laughs> so thank you. Aw. Um, I am just going to do one other quick screen share. For those watching, if you are still here or you're watching it later, I just want to screen share some images of the process like Mark mentioned. I'm gonna try to, of course this is starting at the beginning. Here we go. So we start with recycled scrubs. These are shredded scrubs. We hand cook them sometimes. We have to cut them up into little pieces like postage stamp size. And then they have to go through our paper beater, which turns them into a slurry of pulp and we add cotton to help make better paper with the synthetic fibers. This is a vat with the pulp in there. There's Walt. Walt is our, one of our main paper makers. Here's Walt letting, uh, letting some of the pulp drain when he pulls it up through with a mold and deckle, which is the wooden frame. So you see him pressing it down, which is cooching on the felt. Those are some shots from when we were on the news in the winter. These are freshly cooched um, pieces of little five by seven scrubs paper. So after this, it gets pressed in a hydraulic bottle jack press and then dried. These are the wet sheets ready to go into the dry box. And then these are the dry sheets that Walt just took out of the dry box. And some close-ups. So we have a full rainbow of colors of all kinds of paper. And we have postcards. And Ron and Lindsay have both made some really beautiful uh, journals and books as well. So I'll have to update that. So anyway, I think that is the full circle and it's coming up on 451 here. I did put her bunny ears in the portrait. I really did. <laughs> Look, there they are. <laughs> first much better <laughs> you can't think of Lindsay without thinking of her cute pink ears um, so 
sorry, I just had to jump in. Um, okay, so yes, Walt and Ron, the best paper makers. Uh, Wit says, great work, everyone. Leah Cadia says, beautiful drawings. Oh, thank you so much, everyone, for watching and tuning in on this Sunday afternoon. And thank you all from all across the country and the world watching and participating. It really means a lot to bring the community together in this way to make work about our experiences, especially this past year. So thanks, everyone. You can always see more at frontlinearts.org. And I hope to see you all virtually and in person at more events soon. Thank you, Lindsay and Hugo, for doing an incredible job. Aw, thank you, Bessie. Love to you all. <laughs> Bye.